All right, time for some more sore talk. Nerd mode engaged. So I've mentioned the versatility of swords before, but I've never actually explained what that means. Now at face value, it's obvious. Versatility means the ability to adapt to different situations, having multiple functions, etc. And my standard example has been single-edged versus double-edged. A double-edged blade is more versatile because it gives you more options. You can do things with the other edge. But this is also oversimplifying it in a way because Nothing prevents me from striking with the spine, right? Just because it doesn't have an edge doesn't mean you can't use it. And especially also if you want to deflect an incoming sword cut with the spine, that works perfectly well. In fact, for defensive use, parries and such, this is better to use because that way you don't damage the blade. With, if you do that with the edge, there's more of a risk, of course, of damaging it. But of course, it's not just a matter of one versus two edges. Hilt symmetry also plays in. This one here, this messer, is single-edged, although it can very well have a sharpened edge on the back here. But even if this was completely single-edged, this has a symmetrical hilt. For the most part, the pommel is asymmetrical, but it doesn't really matter because the grip is symmetrical. So I can easily swap this in my hand and it basically feels the same. However, there is a danger in overanalyzing and overestimating the importance of a particular feature. Like, okay, so with the Messer, I could argue it's more versatile because I can swap it around. I could use it this way. Um, am I going to? Not really. There are techniques where you use the, the false edge. It's not like I can't do that with this. That, it's not as convenient. <laughs> it feels a little off, especially because of the weight of this particular falchion here, but I can still do it. Same with the shield how. Boom. This is very simple. I just rotate it. When we compare these two swords, very different, but relatively close in terms of versatility. I can easily deploy the master cuts with this that would normally use the false edge. You know, squinting cut, sword cut, crooked cut. Uh, the only difference is that those are not cuts with this because it's just a blunt spine. Is it going to be as effective as with an edge? Of course not, but is it going to be useless? Definitely not. And again, the handle is symmetrical, so it allows me to quickly use the techniques I need without having to fumble with it so it works perfectly well in that regard, it is versatile. This sword has plenty of options. The ring pommel makes it slightly more awkward for some things if you want to really choke down. This is not really good to grip. On the Trix Messer here, you can, you can go down as low as you want for that extra control. It's not an option here, so this would be technically a bit of a drawback just in terms of pure versatility, but it's again, it's not really gonna matter because all the techniques can be used, no problem. And uh, this can also use half sorting quite well. So if you're fighting somebody in full armor and you want that extra control over the point to you know, guide, direct the point into the gaps of the armor or use the good old murder stroke and hit with the guard or the pommel, this works. This not so much. Half sorting is doable if you just pinch the blade as opposed to wrapping your fingers around. This I would really not want to do because just of the width of the blade. It's so wide that it really digs into the hand and this will make it very difficult to prevent it from actually cutting in. Now, of course, the best thing is always to use gloves. So with thick leather gloves, this would not be a problem, but it's still awkward to hold on to just because of how wide the blade is. So half sorting is fine and this is in fact also a technique that I've seen used with a katana where they put off the flat 
hand against the spine and, and use this for more control and, and you know kind of slicing draw cuts and things like that so that still works so in that regard is a little limited however it still has the ability to strike with a guard it's quite a large guard in this case so even if you don't use half sorting as such, if you end up in a grappling situation, you can, you can strike with that guard quite easily. You, you also have quite a bit of handle sticking out there if you hold it with one hand. So you can grapple with that, you can strike with that, etc. You also have this additional guard here. So this allows for particular techniques that you can't do without that, like catching a, an opponent's cut on the flat and then making sure this stops it. The same as on the single-handed messer. So you would catch the opponent's cut on the flat and you would perform a thrust at the same time. And it's safe because that guard there prevents the hand from getting caught as a, as a blade slides down. Does it mean this guard is better than that? Not necessarily. It means that this is more versatile. It has an additional, it gives you an additional tool for your toolkit. And that's really what fighting is about. You have a selection of tools, which are the techniques that you've trained. Hopefully you've trained them well enough to be able to use them. And then in the particular situation, you pick the tools appropriately in order to defeat the opponent. And the opponent, of course, does the same. They also rummage through their, their toolkit in their head as the fight is going on and, you know, pick what they, they think they need. But there's just alternatives. So if you don't have this nail guard, you can still do this technique, you know, using a thrust to defend against a cut. But you wouldn't do it with a flat, you would do it edge on, because now, Here's the guard. That's what keeps your hand safe. We shouldn't become myopic in looking just at versatility. There's of course plenty of other factors that go into designing a sword. And it's not always just about how many tools can you cram into the box, basically. How many functions can you add? Because there are good reasons for giving a sword a single edge. For one, I said the spine is a lot more durable. You can you can parry with that without having to worry about edge damage. You can use this potentially for less lethal attacks and you can hold on to it without needing gloves, things like that. And of course, there's also material to consider. You know, if you think of the katana, the way it's traditionally made with a, a softer, tougher spine and a harder edge, it needs to be single edge for that. And with some sword types, it would be downright silly to judge them by the versatility, like a bronze sword. This was an early time in the development of swords and they didn't look at this like, hmm, how can we cram more functions into this? Let's, you know, invent the bronze Swiss army knife, even though we don't know yet what Swiss is. This is just all they wanted and all they needed. It doesn't have a guard, doesn't need one because it's used with a shield and it doesn't have anything to strike with really. I mean, I suppose you could strike with a wooden pommel, it wouldn't be terribly effective, but you have your shield to do all kinds of things. So the versatility of this is fairly low, even though it's a double-edged blade. And it's even lower in this case, the Falks. This does not go for versatility. It's a specialized design. So you have a strongly curved blade that well, limits what you can do in some ways and it gives you some extra options. So the one thing it has over other designs in terms of vers versatility is you can kind of sneak around somebody's guard. So the same is true with the saber. If this had the edge on the outside and I cut and somebody tries to defend against that, I can turn this around and kind of sneak around the guard. I showed that in another video. So this gives you different angles to work with. You can kind of try to get over top of the shield or the guard, things like that. And, uh, but otherwise it's not as versatile. You don't have a guard, so you either need a shield or you need to be really good at parrying. And yeah, there's just, you don't have as many options. 
Like you can't <laughs> do a bunch of fancy, you know, back edge cuts. It, it wouldn't make any sense. Again, this doesn't mean that this is a bad sword, that it's worse than others. And I emphasize this because I used to kind of argue along those lines. I used to kind of put versatility on a pedestal and use it to kind of argue that this, this sword design is kind of better than, than another. And that's, that's just short-sighted. There are cases though when one design is more useful than another, in my opinion at least. So if we look at these two here, European buckler on the one hand and Chinese gorong on the other. Now these serve the same purpose. They are both small defensive weapons that are paired with a weapon obviously and they are not used the way that a large shield would be. So the usage, as far as I know, I could be wrong about this, but I think the usage is fairly similar. From what I've seen demonstrations with this, it looks basically like the same idea. So this is for active parrying and for keeping your sword hand safe. So with sword and buckler techniques, if you strike with this, you can use the buckler to prevent your hand from being targeted. And of course, in a bind, you can use this to control the opponent's blade. Uh, you can strike with it, you can parry with it, etc. Et it's pretty obvious. This does the same thing. It's a piece of steel with a handle on that protects this hand and that hand, potentially, if you choose to use it that way. Uh, it doesn't give quite as much coverage as the buckler, depending on the size of the buckler, of course, but it's got all this as well. So for one, the hooks give you additional coverage. Of course, you can parry with that. Um, not necessarily the entire length. If you tried to parry like this, it would most likely just blow through because leverage is working against you at that point. But you can definitely use more surface area here. Plus, you can use this hook here, or the two hooks, effectively. You can hook the opponent's blade, you can hook the hand, the guard, uh, or the hilt in general, uh, things like that. It's got the spike, even for striking, but also for, again, trapping opponent's blades. So this is more versatile than the buckler. It has more different functions. It's a little harder to move around because there's more that can get in the way and collide with the other sword. It's almost like wielding two swords. So it comes with those drawbacks, but just in terms of what tools it adds to your repertoire, this has more, and I would say this is more useful in that particular case. And it makes sense to compare them directly because they are made for the same purpose. So just one final point, I know this is long. Um, you could argue that a messer like this is more versatile than a long sword or the larger two-handed Kriegsmesser for direct comparison. Now, personally, I prefer two-handed swords because there are certain techniques that are easier to do with two hands because you have more control, more stability, etc., etc. So there's definitely something to be said about that. But if you just go by versatility, you could argue this is the better choice or more of a bastard sword, hand and a half sword that is light enough to be used with one hand, which this is, but this is a little easier to control with one hand. So you can use a buckler, a parrying dagger, etc. But you can also use it with two hands. The handle is long enough on this, so you get that extra control. So basically this offers all the same techniques that you have available with that but you can also use it with an offhand weapon. And I wouldn't want to do it like this. That's a bit much. Uh, yeah, you can. You can swing this with one hand. It's not terribly heavy or anything, but it's cumbersome compared to the single-handed messer. Obviously, this gives you more reach and power, but that's not part of versatility, the way I understand it. It's not about options. So if you just go by that, then a single-handed messer is quote-unquote better, at least more versatile than this. Not actually better, but hope you found it interesting. I mean, if you made, did make it this far, then you must have, unless you just skipped all the way through and ended up here in case what a filthy peasant you are. <laughs> just kidding. So yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and have a good one.